probably not that short, but anyway, uh, how to make a small riverside book. You can keep your uh, patterns in, or it's here on the stream or the river fishing, and you see some new bugs you'd like to sketch out and maybe tie it home if you're a fly tire. If not, you can always sketch out and go look at the fly shop to see if you can match up. Anyway, uh, it's a very simple book to make. Uh, I'll go through the materials pretty soon. For the basic material, you're gonna need uh, A4 paper, or just standard legal paper. Uh, about 30 pages. You can make it bigger if you want. Uh, two cardstock. Uh, I have a marbled colored one, so it could be just plain white cardstock. So, two of those. And uh, you're gonna need gesso. I mean, not gesso. Uh, Mod Podge. I'm using Mod Podge or any kind of PDA glue uh, to bind it. Some string, cotton string, or any kind of string you have lying around. I have this lying around. Uh, paintbrush with a hard bristle and some water. And you're gonna need some a bone folder. Uh, I don't have a bone folder, so I'm just gonna use a. Uh, a belt shuttle that I have lying around. Uh, you're also going to need some uh, binder clips and uh, some duct tape. Uh, I'm using black gorilla tape. That's what I had available. Uh, you might also need some scissors. Well, you will need some scissors. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's it for the basic materials. Uh, the next material I'll go over is the So this is the book binding vice. Uh, it's a simple design. Uh, in order to make it, I just found a, I think it's an 11 and a half inch. Yeah, 11 and a half inch board. It's 11 and a half by six. Uh, it's compressed board, so it's just not, not compressed, uh, comprised board. It's just four smaller planks, you know, glued together. Anyway, it was a six foot thing. Lows for. I think it was like 325 on sale for Thanksgiving last year, I believe. Anyway, uh, I got four screws that I had lying around and uh, found some, uh, I think these are called lug nuts or wing nuts. I believe they're called wing nuts. So I got four of those and uh, eight washers just to prevent the. the screws from coming through. I also bought four little plastic, uh, I forget what they're called, they're for the bottom of furniture, uh, furniture feet protectors. Just so I lay it down on something you can slide if I need to pick it up. It just makes it easier to pick it up for me. Anyway, so I just clamped to the, cut the boards to even length, uh, put them in a vise, and drilled four holes so the holes will match up with each other and then put the th screws through. Uh, I stained it just to protect it from warping and all that other fun jazz. Anyway, uh, it's this is not exactly necessary. You probably could do it with just some binder clips or and two rulers or something like that. Just putting two rulers on the Binding and then clamping it down together so it squeezes it together. Same thing as this. It's just to provide a, a base to apply the glue. So, anyway, you have some scrap wood lying around and you wanted to make a couple books. This would be a good investment. 
I could do a video on how to make one of these. Although it's very simple, so it should be easy to do. So it just is basically a clamp. A book binding clamp. I'm sure there's an actual name for this. But anyway. Now for the signatures. I'm using a, a yellow toned 20 pound or 20 weight whatever 20 pound paper uh, standard eight and a half by 11 and I'm folding it over matching up the corners and pressing it down with my shuttle or if you have a, a bone press or what is it called? So, that's basically a signature right there. And I'm stacking them up over here, right outside of the frame of camera, so don't worry, they're going somewhere. I'm going to do that again. So basically I'm putting the finger down. Folding it over. And holding it in place, making sure that the two corners here match up before using my shuttle or a bone folder uh, even a ruler will do it okay, I've gone ahead and made a bunch of them uh, done 30 this could be the size of this book So once you're at this point, you want to work on evening them out, or getting them to sit flush with each other. And now using the binding clips, I'm going to attach it at the top, over, the, over here, where the binding is actually going to occur. So once I have it even, Pinch it and use the binding clip to hold it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So if you didn't have the. Whoop, sorry for the blurriness. So if you didn't have the binding vise. Uh, you would just use these and put them on the side, but that would also mean that uh, the binding is going to be a little looser, so it's going to spray out, uh, spread out a bit, and it's not going to cause too much issue. But since I built this last year, I figured why not? So now that I have these signatures, I'm going to load it into the vise. Show you anyway. Uh, I'm going to adjust the wing nuts, tighten the back ones, so that when it opens it tightens up at the bottom, so it has that kind of clamping action. Anyway, I'm going to load them in. knob here one of these days. <laughs> so now that I have it in like that, I'm going to slowly remove these, back these up, while pushing pressure. Just to slowly work them in. Here I'm going to remove it, but keep the pressure on the vise. And I'm going to slowly push these things in. Probably release a little pressure. So. And just release the pressure, let the pressure of the wood do the work for you. And just keep them, pushing them as gentle as possible. Mm -hmm. 
you want it just so you're just slightly out, not too far out. I think I'm pretty good. So I'm going to push pressure on the vise and tighten up the wing nuts. It's a game of catch up now. I don't want to put too much pressure so it, it doesn't bow out. So it's just estimating pressure on either side. Just want them like finger tight. You don't want them, you don't want to crank it. You don't want to get a, a wrench or anything. Just tighten it up, and then follow it up by tightening the back end. These don't have to be super tight. This is just to prevent them from falling through. Anyway, so now you're left with that. So from here I'm going to stand it up, um, I'll try to do it laying down because I don't have a higher camera stand. So here you're going to get some water, uh, this is a little cloudy from earlier use, recent use, so it's not going to cause any trouble. So you just want to get some water and uh, your brush, and soak your brush probably for a good 10 minutes just to get bristles all nice and wet and you're going to run it along. You want to get it nice and wet. By doing this it's going to cause the paper to swell. And it'll make it a lot more receptive. To the glue or the binding glue, the PDA. So you want to do this for a bit. Kind of oversaturate it. Alright. That so you see, I don't know if you can see it, I'll try and get it a little close. You probably can't see it, but the paper has swelled a little bit. You can tell because the edges start uh, buckling out, or bending outwards, so it's like opening up. So you want to let it dry from here. I know wetting it and letting it dry. You don't want to let it dry fully, is what I mean, I'm trying to say. It's just a little too wet now. So let this sit in for about 10 minutes, depending on the temperature. If it's really warm, uh, four to five minutes. Uh, but it's still pretty cold over here. So I'm gonna set this aside. And, uh, I'm gonna cut so I can clean up the water from the binding process. So I've gone ahead and cleaned up the water from my desk. And now I'm going to get the two pieces of cardstock. And I'm going to fold them the same way as I folded the signatures. These are going to double as the cover in the back, the backing. Uh, and I'm doing them separately from the, the binding itself, the signatures. So if these fall off, the signature still will hold. Same thing by lining them up. And with cardstock, you kind of have to be a little careful versus regular paper. Because if you bend it too quickly, it can actually tear. And you just go flat with a bone shoulder or whatever you have. And then shake it out. a little crooked but doesn't matter. So just a sample. 
course with yours, you'd be a lot more careful with it. And there's different ways to book binding. There's lots of little interesting videos that do it better on YouTube. I'm just showing a sample because this is what I've been doing with it. I'm going to try and just push it down this time. And once I get it done, I'm going to follow it up. So, I don't know if you could hear my actual voice while I was doing that. So I just tapped it down and then followed it up by folding it. So you have that. So basically this is going to sit on top of the signatures and I'm not going to glue this page to the, to the bottom page just because you know, this will be like a title page or something or I can glue something on here, design it, whatever. Anyway, now that I have these two signatures, I'm going to set these aside while the other, while the signatures dry a bit. I'm going to have to hold this while I'm doing it, so it might be a little wobbly. Hopefully not too wobbly, and hopefully it won't unfocus like it's doing. So, I've let it sit for about 10 minutes. About 5, maybe 8 minutes. Most of it. It's kind of like putty. Well, that's the texture of it. So you... When you feel the spine, it'd be like a little like gummy already. So it's it's had some time for the water to seep in and dry. So I'm gonna add a layer of of um, Mod Podge or not Mod Podge? Yeah, Mod Podge. But you can use any kind of PDA glue. Uh, if you really need to make your own, it's I think it's two parts glue to one part water. Uh, Anyway, I'm going to start by adding glue to the brush. My apologies for it if it's a little too shaky. And you want to dab it to work the glue into the paper. You're gonna do about. In the end, you're gonna do about three coats, uh, but your first coat is your most important coat because it's gonna be the real. It's gonna be what makes the paper actually set together. going to be the first coat. I'm not going to film the other coats. Uh, it's just the same process. Um, also, I, I think I want to make a, remind, uh, a little note. If you've left this a little too long, it might spray a little bit too much and you might have wide gaps. Um, before you even start gluing it, you want to make sure you press push the the paper, the, excuse me, the signatures farther in to compress those because that'll just leave a weakness for the paper to fall out and the glue to give way. So anyway, I thought I'd mention that. So I'm going to do three more coats before I come back. So I've let, uh, I've done three, about five coats total. And I've let it dry for 12 hours, basically overnight. So from here, I'm going to add in the cover pages, the front and back cover, the, just the folded cardstock. So I'm going to pull the 
book out of the vise. should look like like your book at this point you could flick through it shouldn't come apart of course gonna get three more co coats of glue on the back when I put these in and then I'm gonna let it sit for another 12 hours so from here I'm gonna loosen up all the vice parts so I can re-put it uh, place it back in once I'm done. All right, make sure all everything's clear. I'm gonna get back the binding clips, and I'm gonna put on the covers. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't glue it backwards with the covers like this. And it really wouldn't matter. It just aesthetics, I guess. Put them on, one in the front, one in the back. Make sure they sit even. And I'm going to use the binder clips. To keep them in place while I put them back in the vise. screws, the real rear bolts on the vise. Not too tight, just tight enough. Just finger tight, rather. I want to pull off these. Hopefully I can do this in one try. I'm going to slowly slide it back farther in. pressure just so the cover doesn't the new pages that I added haven't don't go out of line and now I'm gonna tighten the vise down yes, I'm happy From here, I'm gonna put. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna make the little spot saver uh, slash pen holder with the stitch thread that I have, the crochet thread or crochet crochet thread, whatever it would be called, uh, just something I had lying around. So I'm gonna make just a, a loop in one of the ends. So I'm gonna fold it once I once I form a loop. I'm gonna fold it over and pass it through that hole twice. And then pull tight. So let go the end. And then cinch it down. There we go, a little loop on the end. So, I'm going to measure the length of the spine. 
So that's three inches. Estimated. And I'm gonna snip off there. So basically you just put it to the book you have or the pages you folded and just measure that and then add an estimated three to two inches. So then we'll turn it up so it's facing down. Like I said before, mind the camera shakes, I'm not the best handheld camera person. Anyway, I'm going to apply a layer of glue using the same brush. Be generous with the glue. Making sure it seeps in at the sides. So that it binds the covers, the cover pages down, which would be the two cardstock. Alright, so there's that. And at this point, I'm also going to add the string I created for the pen holder. So basically, I'm going to put it halfway down the spine. It's hard to do this with the holding the camera. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little glue on top of it, dab it. Oh, sorry for the mess over there. So now I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to put on another three to four coats and let it sit for 12 hours, so I'll see you in 12 hours. Okay, so we're on the final process of the book binding. Uh, the glue's fully dried. It's been 12 hours, a little bit more than 12 hours. Everything's held together pretty nicely. It's got little strings attached. We'll pull out. Uh, I've gone ahead and measured out the spine by just pulling out a piece of duct, uh, Gorilla Tape, the black, you can use any color, you can use duct tape, whatever you have around. And uh, from there I'm going to estimate the size of the, using some of the string I had left, or I have. So, your spine cover it can be as long as you want, this just helps get a little bit equal even. So we'll just pull it over like that. And all right, there's good. And snip off. So I'm gonna use this on the duct tape that I have. So I'm gonna move back a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera. Turn the tape upside down, and put the string as a guide. So from here, I'm going to cut as straight as possible up the length of the tape. This is where it gets kind of tricky because of the glue. The adhesive part of the tape. I could probably just pull it down, but it's not too hard. So now I 
have this. I did give it a little bit extra on the top. So I'm gonna remeasure and then cut from there. Pardon the camera move again. spine as a guide. I gave it a little bit more than I probably should have. So from here I'm going to make a mental marker of it where I want to cut. It turns out a little shorter, it doesn't matter. Don't use any fancy scissors because stuff is sticky and it's always going to gum up the Scissors. Anyway, I'm gonna put it where I estimate it. This is just for looks, really. And for a little bit more durability. Anyway, I'm gonna use the shuttle that I had, or if you have a bone folder. So now I'm gonna bend it over. Push it in, just using the, the flat side of my finger to level it up. From there, I'm going to push it over again. Did show up a little bit short, but no worries. This is just, as I said, pretty much for looks and for a little bit of added durability. You can be as straight or as perfect as you want to be it. That's up to you. Using the shuttle again. And running it along the spine. And since I went off, I have a little bit of a taper, uh, extra tape here, which I'm going to use the scissors to clip off, just so nothing gets stuck to it. sides. And there we go. The book is complete. So, I'm up a bit. Part of the camera movements. So, now you have a page marker. And the loop just allows you to put a pen, so... to here. Keeps the pen. Of course you can uh, make this wider. You can even uh, get a pencil and uh, use a knife to notch into it. And just tie this into the notch so you have a little pencil that will travel with you wherever. I usually just use this a page as a page holder half the time I end up leaving this in the stream at the side of the stream so I'd rather it only be this that I guess forms litter the rest of this will fall apart because I'm using you know, glue that's supposedly water based and non toxic so really the only litter that would be would be the tape that would be the only thing that wouldn't fall apart paper falls apart you know, the string will fall apart. Anyway, uh, that's how I make these streamside journals. You can use it for any kind of journal, really. And you can use any number of pages, but I wouldn't go over like 60 without either using staples as a binding or uh, sewing the. So these little sleeve nuts together. Right 
or using some kind of bind, better binding method. This method works well. It's cheap and easy. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick run through what I did. Uh, so I used uh, kind of yellow tinted uh, A4 20 pound paper. Uh, folding it in half. So it'd be five and a half. Five and a half by eight and a half on either side, and from there I uh, put in the vise and glued it. Also to mention, before I forget, uh, using two glue, two rulers and a couple binding clips will not work. I tried it. I was gonna add it, add it into this video, but it came out like crap. So scratch that original idea maybe there is a better way of doing it other than two rulers uh, building the book vice isn't expensive you, if you have a 2 by 4 you can even use that split that in half anywhere where it gives a, a decent surface uh, decent pressure surface so it keeps the papers together and the spine won't turn out like messy It'll look a lot more like a book Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. There's a lot of videos out there, I'm sure, that probably explain this in a better, in better ways. But, just thought I'd show you how I do it. Pretty much it's a journal for anything, I just use it as a stream site journal, so I just make notes on insects I find, or patterns that come to my mind while I'm out, on the, out fishing. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching.